when the Vlad laws were introduced, the, the Greens were the sole voice of dissent in the room. I think both LNP and Labor supported them at the time. I know Labor later recanted, and that to me looks like populism rather than a genuine adherence to core values, but that's another matter. The Greens, we support a Bill of Rights or a Charter of Rights. We have internal party debates about what the best form of that is. We support the creation of a multi-member proportional system of government. And again, we've put forward a p policy in this election of introducing an upper house, but I think just as likely to get through is a multi-member proportional system. If there was a participatory, fully democratic system where we all could sit down and, I mean, Wikipedia is a wonderful example, not on policy, but on document creation, where if you have a mass number of people contributing to something over a good period of time, you get a reasonable document. So why can't we get involved in a particip you know, participatory mechanism such as that for policy, and then when, it, when we can see there's enough, enough participation in something over a good period of time, that then gets considered or goes to, goes to the drafts people to be drafted into a bill to be voted on by the people. As someone who has uh, first-hand uh, seen the legislative repeal of particular rights and also the targeting of particular groups in our society, and it's not just criminal organised, you know, criminal bikey gangs, it's actually young people who come in contact with the law in this state. The way they have been um, legislated against by the Newman LNP government has been an absolute disgrace. Uh, there have been other windbacks, like the right for the public uh, to object and to know about and to appeal against inappropriate development. The Labor Party will be making a public transport announcement this election. There are, I'm sorry, there's two days to go um, and it will come out. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that um, uh, the fair structure in Queensland uh, is not just unfair to concession card holders, uh, students, uh, pensioners as well. Um, I, I agree with you, there is a fundamental problem in terms of the fare structure and we need to revisit that as a community. So I hear what you're saying, Michael, we are committed to addressing uh, those gaps in terms of the affordability for all Queenslanders. Uh, and if we win on Saturday, um, you know, I'm happy to sit down and talk to you about the way forward. Thank you. We support concession card fare, concession fares for people on concession cards. That costs about $4 million a year. We have a plan to reduce ticket prices to 2010 levels, so that's a reduction of about 55%. Cost is about $200 million a year, and it's going to cost about $60 million to introduce new routes and improve the efficiency of existing routes. So it's fully costed, it's economically viable, it's in the context of a $5.5 billion transport budget. So hopefully, if Labor doesn't get there's out in time, you can just copy ours, and that'll be, it'll be good. We'll work together, it'll be great. I've taken the time to learn Yongamata, which is, it's the, language, the dialect is Jambopongo, and it's spoken by about 8,000 8, people up in the NT. And I think more people, more Australians, need to be encouraged and facilitated to learn Aboriginal languages and to learn more about Indigenous cultures, and that comes back to education at, at the school level. So until we have treaties, and, and meaningful treaties, not, not the sort of things we have over in Canada, until we get that step, then the rest is going to... It's, it's basically going to be a case of white people telling Indigenous Australians how to live. And so that's not going to work. We've had, we've had paternalistic government policies making for decades from all, all sectors of the political sphere, and the Greens aren't... They're, they're not their hands aren't clean in this either because some of the Greens policies have been quite paternalistic in the past and I'm quite happy to state that and I've criticised the party for that in the past but we need to treat it as the number one answer. So. We're apparently a developed country but when it comes to Indigenous rights and Indigenous living conditions they're one of the worst in the world so there's a lot that needs to be done there. Recognition in the Constitution, treaties such as Jonathan's talking about. Um, the last person I spoke to about 15 minutes before I arrived here was an indigenous uh, lady in the community, um, and uh, she loves the, the participate democracy idea. She thinks it's a way that you know the indigenous community will finally be able to get a bit of a voice out. And one of the things she was talking about was maybe we can forward changing the Australian flag. And that's a very interesting question because I do think we could get consensus potentially on that. 
Um, there are some other things that might, might be a bit more difficult or maybe, you know, changing the name of Australia Day. I think it's got to be both ways. I think there needs to be not only the, the formal acknowledgement in our constitution uh, of um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, uh, but I think that we need to relook uh, at Aboriginal controlled organisations, of which there have been many uh, in Queensland, Aboriginal Legal Service, um, or organisations that aren't specifically Indigenous but have a very strong Indigenous focus like Sisters Inside which has been defunded. Um, other mechanisms that have really assisted in terms of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population that have changed have been things like community conferencing, trying to keep young Aboriginal kids out of jail. Uh, all of those programs have been abolished uh, by the Newman government um, and part of the reason why we're seeing an escalation in the incarceration rate is because all of those support services have been defunded or the diversionary justice system have also been axed as well.